the typical patient that I end up seeing um, would be someone that has had a problem with a skin rash usually for months to years. Uh, I often get referrals from outside dermatologists uh, for these patients that they haven't been able to figure out what the cause of their rash is. Um, so these patients are usually pretty chronic, have had the disease for a long time, often very frustrated. Um, itchy skin is very frustrating. And uh, so they're looking for help and that's where I come in. When a patient is referred to me, um, or if I'm seeing a, one of my own patients for something that I'm considering could be contact dermatitis, uh, myself or my resident or both of us um, will take a very specific and extensive history to try to identify potential um, factors in the patient's environment that might be causing the rash. Um, the environment might include their home environment, um, you know, some of the soaps or detergents that they might be using, some hobbies that they might have or things they do in their spare time, um, and then as well as the work environment. So I do have patients that will come in and they're allergic to something that they're being exposed to at work and trying to get an idea of their world um, both at home and at work is very important to try to pinpoint what things we might need to test for to identify the specific uh, substances that are causing the problem. In these encounters with um, these types of patients, the ones that come in for contact dermatitis or potential contact dermatitis, we really use a team approach. Um, I have a specific nurse that uh, does patch testing with me, so she knows uh, you know, kind of the questions that we're going to ask, the important information that needs to be delivered to the patient, and so um, I really do use the nurse as well as my other uh, physician colleagues to help not only get the information from the patient, but then also to deliver information back to the patient. Uh, in that first visit, the consultation appointment, we're really getting to know the patient, know their rash, know their environment, know what other factors might be contributing, even some of their other medical conditions or stressors in their life, and you know, trying to make them comfortable with the environment and also comfortable with the testing that they're gonna um, be undergoing. Um, we give them pretty extensive you know, information on patch testing. That's the, the test that we do to look for the allergens. They get to take that information home with them too and um, can look through it and we're always happy to answer phone calls or um, my chart messages. Those are email messages that patients can send to us you know, for further clarification of the testing process even before they undergo the testing. Um, and then when they come in, hopefully they have a, a good understanding of what's going to happen. At that initial consultation appointment, I usually don't change the treatment approach that the referring physician has started, mostly because I'm not sure what the patient might be allergic to. and. Weirdly enough, sometimes patients will be allergic to some of the things that they're using to treat the skin rash. And if I'm switching things even at the beginning, it just adds more confusion once we find the positives if they are potentially allergic to something that they were applying as treatment, you know, trying to decipher, you know, yes, you can apply this, no, you can't apply this. It's a little more complicated. So if I have no evidence that they are allergic to what they're using when they come in, I keep it that way until we get the final read and then we kind of talk about um, what other treatments that they can use. So a lot of my patients, um, a lot of these referral patients, once they are given the information about their allergens and their safe product list, they often are able to improve significantly to the point that they may no longer need any topical steroids or they may just need steroids every once in a while um, when they're exposed, often inadvertently, to an allergen. You know, you can imagine it might be kind of difficult if you go on a trip, you know, to be able to take all of your safe products with you. I have lots of patients that are very motivated to do that, but sometimes, you know, you just get stuck somewhere, you don't have your safe um, soap or shampoo, you use whatever's in the hotel room, and then you get a flare up. So those patients may have to use steroids here and there, but um, a lot of times they, um, have significantly decreased the amount of steroid that they have to use.